Hello, Floss Tube. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Artith Design, where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, I'm so happy that you came back to spend some time with me today. Today is Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, and we're counting down 11 days until Halloween. And with that, I put on some goodies in my hair, my Halloween needlework shirt, and ready to talk cross stitch. Unfortunately, I have not done any dark October stitching, please forgive me, because I have been focused on all of my cross stitch birds, and I can't wait to show you what I have done. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about cross stitch. And then I'm gonna talk about what I'm all into. And that includes some of the library books I got uh, with sewing and quilting. I wanna show you some of my dollhouse stuff that I've worked on. I've got a fly buzzing buzzing here. <laughs> I also uh, wanna, all, what I'm all into, I've got a couple of movies to show and share with you. So again, if you wanna hang out for the cross stitch, great. If you wanna hang out for the cross stitch and you know, hashtag make all the other things, that's awesome too. So we're gonna get started. This is Luna Moon and she has been in a mood. She found uh, the tomatillo plants and she is yearning to go back out in the garden and explore. <laughs> Loki Pug is sleeping down here on my lap, so we'll see how long that lasts. I want to start with a correction. Uh, last week I showed a really fun cross stitch that Karen, hi Karen, <laughs> made and sent to me and I accidentally showed it upside down and it, please excuse me for that. So here we go. This is the correct placement. <laughs> this is a little ant carrying the leaf and I feel like that's kind of indicative of a lot of us, you know, carrying a larger load, large load. So anyway, I, it's so precious. I'm sorry I showed it upside down. She stitched it on a 14 count Ada with two strands of floss and it's really pretty. I think it might be something I make into a project bag or something for the kids. We are reading the, the big book of animal poetry and Ant is one of the little creatures that have poems that we've been talking about. So maybe it'll get integrated into the classroom space. So uh, sorry Karen I showed your stitch wrong. <laughs> I guess I was just so excited I'm just showing it and I got a fly pestering me. What Shoe fly don't bother me. All right the next Thing that I worked on and I and finished I was hoping for a finish and I got it is a Cardinal by Blackbird Designs and it is from the home for the holidays book and it is this I made a conversion I did not use uh, the call the call for except for one uh, uh, the, the green the the DMC green. So here we go. I have it on my hanger, <laughs> my finished pieces. So I guess I'll have to show, do a little show and tell of those as well. So here we go. Here is my finished piece. I have not ironed it yet. I did some measuring to see about frames and it's like five, five and a half by 15 so if I added a border and a margin it's um like if I did like seven inches by uh, 16 and that didn't and then eight inches by 16 and that's not standard so I was looking everywhere for frames I don't know I might just make this into a quilted wall hanging or it will just stay right here <laughs> for the holiday until I figure out what I am going to do this is stitched on a uh, 32 count raw linen with the polka dot and it was one of those like a screen print polka dot and I did choose and thank you all for your advice I did add all of the snowflakes and the embellishment uh, stitches and then the bottom I did it as charted in the, the called for French says la raison par le être joyeuse excuse pardonnez-moi mon my French is ugh. Très mal. 
but I used the Trinway silks for the red cardinal. The brown and the yellow orange is are from Old Tattered Flag. The DMC and Trinway for the green leaves and the white is also the Trinway silks. I am very happy with how this turned out and now my only issue or complaint I guess as it were is how do I frame it? I, I, like I said, I just placed it here. I've got some other things that I need to frame. The, this is my completed Shakespeare's Peddler piece that I modified and finished. Here lie my needles and I gave up on everything else. I'm not putting the border and I'm not doing anything. I love that little fox. I did this on, I did this on fabric that I dyed myself. Sweetheart, just lay down. Uh, here is my Blessings Be Thine. A couple of you have asked about. And I measured it. It needs a 9 by 9 frame. So I uh, square frame. So that one's a little easier potentially to find a frame for. Uh, because it's more of a standard size. So 8 by 8. So I, I would like a 9 by 9 frame. Then here I have Yellow Submarine. Also Blackbird, and it's on a 14 count Ada that I dyed myself. And I absolutely love this piece. I keep saying I'm gonna have it done and I haven't. Uh, congratulations to many of you who did the impromptu international floss tube <laughs> finishing weekend. I did clearly did not participate. <laughs> and then these were a couple of the save the stitches that I also need to repurpose. So again, I have them fashioned on one of those vintage trouser wooden hangers and I'm like I said I'm really excited for this finish yay okay the next thing I worked on is well I worked on boobies apiary but I or not boobies apiary <laughs> excuse me I worked on uh, the dancing birds uh, by Lindy Stitches but I forgot to grab it so we're going to move on to show you. I worked on the samplers, not forgotten. It was the called for kit. It was the kit with all the called for colors. I got the kit online at Kitten Stitcher's website. It came with everything, all the called for stuff. So that, and it's part of a large, this motif is part of a larger sampler. I know that Lisa Kindred Stitcher just finished the sam the full sampler and I believe oh it's it's gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous so I just did this one the one little thing and I am making a lot of headway I finished the entire bouquet it is stitched one over two on this fabric uh what it in the kit 36 count 10 roof from weeks dye works and then all of the floss are also all from weeks dye works and it was included in the kit that's my backside I really I've really enjoyed doing this and it's been fun doing the the side motif again I don't know if I'm gonna put 1813 here or if I'm going to put another thing date there but I can't think of it really a meaningful date I don't know so it might just be 1813 so again this kit it was really cool I got it it came with the finishing comes with the finishing the back fabric and the ribbon to make it into this little pillow and hopefully I'll, I will do that hopefully <laughs> okay the next Thing I worked on is I kitted up and kitted up I means I, I, I gathered all the supplies for the Marie La Toinette cross stitch. This is a new collection release from Peacock and Fig. She um, gave me the collection uh, ahead of time uh, to review and potentially talk about on my channel which I did and I am <laughs> and I love it so much that this is the one that I would like to stitch 
she ca she has a couple of the other ones like general the general and the there's one here oh look at that look at the <laughs> I love it with the butterfly. I love all the little accessories, like, you know, the birds and put cute little things on it. And I, the last one here has the little tiara crown. I really like this and I love the color palette. So what I, by kidding up, what I did was I got the thread list. I wrote down all the colors that I needed. And so here's the thread list that she provided. And then I hand wrote everything that I needed. And then I nicely gave it to my husband and he went down to Michael's craft store. And he was, I was, we are fortunate enough. He was able to get every single color needed. I don't have, I didn't miss a single color. So here are all the colors. And it's really cool because the palette that she used is very similar to some of my Easter pa uh, Eastern pa Easter patterns that I have done. Uh, so it was really cool to see her utilizing how we have similar color palettes. I mean, obviously I've designed a lot more prim, you know, but it's neat to see when designers, when we kind of have that same wavelength with color matching, it's fun. It, I, it, it makes me happy. So those are the colors. And then I pulled this fabric that uh, Karen also sent me. Thank you, Karen. And it is a Belfast white 32 count. So it, I, I would like to cut it to size. I know, shocker. I, I usually don't like to cut fabric, but I like to cut it to size and hem the edges, um, the edges so that I can stitch this. She did hers uh, on a linen as well. And it's like a white, so I, I thought this like yellow cream would look nice with the colors. Getting a weird little glare with the Ziploc bag. <laughs> so I'm really excited to get this together and get this and, and start this. What, what I really like about this pattern as well is she translated her artwork to cross stitch really well, including all of the back stitching components. And I'm really excited to work on a project that has that artistic back stitching. I have not done a project with that before, and I think it will be very good for me, not only as a stitcher, but also as a designer to understand and see how it's done. I've done, I've, I've, I've been, I've charted, I've, I have charted many things with back stitching, but you know, you never know how really truly user friendly it is. So I'm excited to see how her back stitching translates with my own stitching and how comfortable it is. Oh, here's my bread pants. I got a pug right here. Uh, since everything happened when the world shut down in March, <laughs> uh, I have grown larger. And with that, uh, my wardrobe has changed drastically, including, you know, red pants and ordering some other clothing that fits me, that fits me. <laughs> so, it's going to be interesting to see what I, what come, what, what will come with my wardrobe this winter because I, I, I kind of pulled out my winter stuff and none of it fits <laughs> and that's okay. It doesn't matter what I weigh. I just need to have clothes that fit. So the next thing that I worked on is the Cardinal. Let me see. I made a working copy. I'm going to show you. This is the Cozy Cardinals by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. And her name is Ryan. And she is also a young designer. And I'm so excited her, this made the cover of Just Cross Stitch magazine, the December issue of this year. And also uh, this color fabric. It's gorgeous. It's also, it's by Angela of Color and Cotton, another younger uh, person uh, with a small business who made the cover. So congratulations to both of you ladies. It's so wonderful to see. It, it's fun to watch everyone's journeys on FlossTube and on Instagram, on social media to see how people have 
progressed and evolved and it it's 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 really fun to be on the journey with with them and I know several of you have been on the journey with me you've seen my hair go from here to shave to longer you know it just it's it's nice so I told myself once I finished the Blackbird Designs Cardinal I could start on this Cardinal so Again, my husband, I, when I sent him, he got all the colors for me in DMC, except for one. He was well, missing one color. He went to two different Michaels over a two week period to get all the floss for me. I'm still missing one and that's okay. So I, these are all the colors. They're all the called for colors and I put them on my own thread drops that I made. And I took a piece of advice from another floss tuber and wrote my number, the symbol and the number in pencil rather than pen so I could reuse the thread drop. And I I ran out of my <laughs> really awesome, the, the malleable luggage tag keys. So I am using a binder clip thing, which, you know. <laughs> so I got these all prepped one night and I decided to do it like this versus on the bobbins and the colors are really pretty and it, it's been really fun to, to work with. I started the project and I'm stitching it in hand and I started it and I have not been able to put it down. So let me show you. It looks a little bit messy, but bear with me. I'll explain. Okay. So this is on a piece of it's like a light blue fabric and it's got uh, the white screen printed like speckles. It was unmarked, but Karen, Karen also sent this to me. Uh, she gifted me a lot of fabric, which has allowed me to do a lot more stitching this year, which I am eternally grateful for. I, the fabric, the limited fabric that I did have all was going with my model stitching. And so it's been really nice with the gifted fabric to be able to do more personal stitching rather than model stitching. So thank you and I appreciate it. So here I started in the very center of the pattern and quickly realized that the one color that I am missing from my color palette is the color for the little, for the lady cardinal. Where did it go? I put the, I put the sheet somewhere. Anyway, uh, oh, here it is right in front of me. So I started right in the center and I got some of the yellow in and then I'm missing it's like a straw gold. It is uh 3852. I'm missing. <laughs> so I got three stitches in and that one color I'm missing. So here we go. I so I started moving over and I did this snowflake here and then I I got in some of the snow and then this is the pine cone and it's really pretty. It's got the snow right here. Uh, so I'm really excited and I have seen several people um, with their full coverage stuff like the heaven and earth designs, the real full coverage, they'll, they'll stitch and then they'll park their thread and then pull it down. So I decided to try to do that and I'm doing it, doing this well in hand, but it's actually working out pretty well. So I, I parked the, I think, I think it's called parking. <laughs> I, I set these aside and then I used all the blue. So I, you know, finished the thread, but here I've got the two different browns and they're parked. And then, so I've been doing that because it's, it's the, the pine cone is pretty detailed that has, I think, four different browns plus the plus the snow colors, a couple different, three different snow colors. So, but it, it adds tremendous depth and I'm really excited. So again, I'm, I'm pulling my strands across while stitching in hand. I, I think, I think I need to figure out the wonderful world of Q-snaps. I think I need to uh, purchase a Q snap and learn how to use it instead of doing everything in hand. I, I'm not sure if I am saving any time with some of these specialty things um, by stitching in hand, if it would actually 
go faster or be less frustrating for some of these complicated things. This fly! <laughs> if I had it in a Q-snap, I have hoops and I like, I enjoy hoops, but I've realized that I've spent a lot of time getting the tension correct and getting everything and then I pop it out of the hoop so I don't get the fabric memory mark, the hoop marks. So I feel like just to sit down and start a project, it takes me 15 minutes just to get it settled. And I'm not sure if that's a realistic amount of time and if that is the same with Q-snaps. So it's something I'm going to look into and consider. I also have a couple scroll rod frames that I got at the thrift store a couple years ago. And I've also considered um, pulling that out. Many of you have been really helpful in telling me how to attach fabric and then attach the piece and try scroll rod frames. But between my dogs that like to eat everything, hashtag nothing is safe, and my children that like to touch everything, I don't know if I wanna have a large scroll rod out or how you use it, maneuver. So I just have some logistical things to think about. So there we go. I have a finished cardinal, a started cardinal, and a kitted up Marie La Twinette. So all about birds. So that is all my talk today about cross stitch. So if you wanna head on out, thank you so much for spending some time with me. If you'd like to stay and listen some more about make all the things, here we go. I want to talk about what I am on what I am all into and I just realized I did not grab the one thing I really wanted to show you all oh my gosh okay I started working on the dollhouse miniatures and Karen had sent me the little miniature first I drink the coffee then I do the things sticker and it's the the sticker put out by Beth Twist of ha Heartstring Samplery of her model. And so I I put it behind plastic and made a little miniature frame and painted it. So the samplers in a little frame. And of course I didn't grab it. I grabbed everything else. But I wanted to show you what else I've been working on in the dollhouse. So I finished the mini quilt and I had issues putting the binding on. So it's definitely handmade. I did a zigzag stitch with the sulky polystar and I made a mistake here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tiny patch with my initials and the date, you know, so <laughs> but it's got little squirrels. And these are the, these two squares have the French laundry set that I got um, the mini charm pack from the quilt shop. So that is the mini quilt officially all done. Well, except for the little patch. The next thing I worked on was the little tiny doll and she's not done. I need to do her face, but she, I did yarn, uh, glued yarn down for hair and then I got a little acorn cap for her head and she is, um, spun cotton. So I used, um, glue water mixture and, um, it's like paper mache, but spun cotton and then her little body. So I need to put her face on and I'm excited about her. Then I made, I told you all, I made the dog, the dog bed to, well, I went to make the dog cause they said, well, you have the dog bed, but where's the dog? I went to make the dog and I didn't make a dog. It, she turned out more like a cat, which thrilled the children. So I made this little cat and I used some yarn that I have and the t and wire. I and but they said she needs a face. So I've got to figure out the face and the paws. So there's that. And they said, "Well, now if there's a cat bed and a cat, but where what about the dog?" So <laughs> they've been playing with those little dog. In the, in the, so I made a little dog bed. So I still have to paint it and both of them need little cushions. They were going through my scrapbook paper and my daughter saw the, the sun here and asked for a frame for this. There's still hot glue coming off. So I put a piece of plastic, clear plastic over to act as glass, scrapbook paper. And then I glued and tried to make kind of like a whimsical frame out of the popsicle sticks for that. And she put that over the fireplace. I made, 
the little sink. It's not done yet, but I started making the sink and it's a double sink and I use the condiment containers from like fast food. The like, you know, you could get the like the mini ranch or the mini barbecue dipping sauce things. So I made the sink with that. And then this is cardboard and popsicle sticks and the top here has scrapbook paper. So I did that and I left a space here because I ran LED lights underneath and in some of the rooms. And so the LED lights will show up on, uh, when this is against the wall, the LED lights come through this right here and make it glow. So I'm really excited to finish this and I got to figure out how to make like a little faucet. And then the last thing I did not, I did not make, I bought, I could not help myself. It came with a little miniature remote, but the kids got a flat screen. They got a flat screen TV for their dollhouse. Remember though, I made tiny books and I made the library. So the dollhouse has a dedicated library and I'm making more tiny books, but there's also the tiny TV. <laughs> this little remote, it's so cute. <laughs> So that is what I'm all into as far as miniatures go. And thank you all for your kind words and comments and requests to see a tour of the dollhouse. How about I will do my best. Uh, I would like to get it a little more complete before I do a tour of it. It was a dollhouse that it's a, it's a dollhouse. It's a three story and it was made from a kit and the people, whoever assembled it, they did paint the outside, but the inside is untouched, unfinished walls and floor. Like it's so it's just wood in the inside. So the kids have been picking out wallpaper and flooring and I put lights in just so we can see, but I'm not ready to quite show it yet. So, but maybe, maybe soon, soon. Yeah, we'll say soon. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about, um, what I'm all into is some DVDs. I got these from the library. So you can check out, you can request electronic materials and check them out. So I wanted to share this. The It's um, really awesome. It's the Modern Dance Company. It's the most well-known Alvin Alvary American Dance Theater and it's awesome and oh my gosh amazing world renowned so we've been watching this and my daughter has been like dancing along to it we talked about set design and the difference in modern dance versus classical ballet so and with classical ballet we've been watching an evening with the Royal Ballet <laughs> and it's at the Royal Opera House so the the favorites in our house, well, the favorites, <laughs> Giselle has been a fun one and um, the Fire, Firebird, but I don't, this Firebird isn't on this one. It's on another DVD. But I, then I also wanted to thank um, one of you who left a comment that said, if you like dollhouses to check out this documentary on Tasha Tudor, she's an illustrator. And so we got that and we started watching this. So I know this, um, so this is, this has been really fun to see an artist and the documentary of her life. So those are the videos that we've been watching. And then I bought something last week along with a miniature television. I also broke down and got the sticker book, the large, gorgeous sticker book. I was not about to pay $20 for this. And then it came up on a lightning deal on Amazon for $8, $7.99 free shipping. And I was like, buy now. So <laughs> if I could get a sticker book for under $10, yes, please. So I'm really excited about this. I know several people have purchased this and love it. So I'm excited to use it. So yay. Speaking of books, I also got two more books. They're craft books and I've really enjoyed looking through them. And the first one is Seaside Home and I got it for the, I saw it had this 
cute little pillow but it's got some really cute little projects on it embroidery and sewing it's got the whale I really liked this the the changing with the beach hut and if there's a fish some embroidery like the octopus embroidered crab so this is this book is really well done and it's like a consortium of different artists that all like contributed a design to the book so that this is really cool and then I got this book animal friends to sew and it's simple handmade decor toys and gifts for kids and uh because my kids they want everything right so <laughs> the, the little sloth pillow. So I thought that was really cute. And there was this whale. So, you know, I'm all about whales. I got that pattern from the quilted raven that has the whale. This is a teether, but I thought maybe I could make a miniature whale with some of my denim fabric that I have. And it, it comes with the pattern and everything. And then well I guess those are the two that I really really liked but they had like these towel unicorn thingies the kids love that stuff so those are <laughs> some of the things that I am all into yay I uh, I also want to thank all of you who reached out and said that you've seen my punch needle embroidery design that's coming up in the holiday mega issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. Yes, I have a design and I'm really excited. It is called Winter Puffin and it is my first ever uh, magazine published that fly. <laughs> the magazine uh, of, of my Punch Needle embroidery. I do have a couple designs on my website, but it's really neat to also show it, you know, in a magazine. So I have uh, the Happy Holidays gift bag is in the Just Cross Stitch December issue and then Winter Puffin is in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine and I think that's coming out soon in like a week or two. So yay! Uh, I want to thank all of you who joined me this week and who have bought my patterns, stitch my patterns, left me comments. I've been working really hard to respond to everybody but it has been it has been something else here at my house uh, with homeschool and the changing of the seasons and it's just, it's been a lot. <laughs> so I hope that you all know that I appreciate you so much. I'm so happy that you came to spend some time with me this week. All of your comments about quilting and crafting and uh, videos and documentaries, please know that you have, you positively influence and inspire me more than I can articulate on camera. I, I'm going to pick up little Loki pug because yeah, I'm, I need you to be awake for this. We're going to talk to our friends. Okay. I want you all to know that you matter. Yeah. That you matter, that your stitching matters, that you're just a wonderful human being. Okay. <laughs> don't let anyone take the joy of stitching and crafting and creating away from you. You deserve all the craftiness and happiness that life can bring you. All right. I love you. Have a beautiful week of stitching and we'll talk soon. Take care.